Hi, I'm Matt Jacobs, and this is Lab 1 Charge Tapes. The purpose of this lab, uh, we are, so we're trying to use common household objects and observe interactions between those objects, such as clear tape. We want to determine how much excess charge is on the tape. We want to observe the transfer of electrons, and we want to observe how much charge affects object movement. The fundamental principles in this lab were Newton's second law, which is force equal to mass of acceleration, Newton's third law, which is each reaction is equal and opposite reaction, and Coulomb's law, which states that the magnitude of the electrostatic force between two point charges is directly proportional to the product of the magnitudes of the charges and, in, and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. So the results that we found were that the U-tapes repel each other because they have the same sign charge. We said that the tape was positively charged because it was attracted to a negatively charged plastic pen. The tape charge was 9.3147 times 10 to the negative 9th, and the excess charge was 5.8217 times 10 to the 10th. So in the model, what I did to create it was I made two U-tapes and laid them on top of one another on a flat surface. We quickly pulled one tape off the other, and then we would confirm that the tape is charged by rubbing a plastic pen on like hair and clothes, and then we would test it to see if they would attract each other. And then we repeated steps two and three to create a second tape. Um, we attached one tape to two objects of the same height, as you can see here, and then we took the other tape and raised it until the top one began to float. Um, my prediction before this was that the two tapes would repel each other, and this is because they were charged the same way and therefore would have the same sign charge. And in the observation, the data confirmed that, as you can see, um, the tapes did repel each other because they were both positively charged. What we assumed in this lab was that, well, first thing is that we treated the tape as a point charge instead of a line charge because it would simplify calculations. We ignored air resistance. Um, the charge, of the, we said that the charge of the U-shaped tape was evenly distributed throughout the tape. And we said that both tapes would have the same amount of charge. The data that we collected was that the length of the U-tape was 0.199 meters, the width was 0 0.02 meters, the mass was 0.199 grams, uh, the distance when the floating began was 0 0.02 meters, the surface area that we found by taking the length times the width was 0 0.00398 meters squared, therefore we were able to get the number of atoms by dividing that by the area of an atom, and we got 3.988 times 10 to the 17th atoms. So the magnitude of our force due to gravity was uh, 1.95 times 10 to the negative 3 in the y direction. Um, we found that the charge of the U-tape was, and we did this by taking by using Coulomb's law, we found the charge of the U-tape was 9.309 times 10 to the ne negative 9th Coulombs. In order to get excess electrons, we took the charge divided by the charge of a single electron, and we found 5.81843 times 10 to the 10th electrons. And then in order to get the ratio of excess electrons to atoms, we just took atoms divided by excess electrons, and we got 6.85408 times 10 to the 6 atoms per one electron. Um, the computational model, so for the point charge, um, we have, so the first thing that we had to do is define all the constants, and then what our code does is we create this output, which has red on top, which is a top tape, um, and blue is the bottom tape, and then we have two arrows from the red sphere, which are equal, which means that the sphere is in equilibrium. The orange, uh, the orange arrow is the charge due to gravity, or not char the force due to gravity, and this is the electrical force from the blue tape that is repelling. So the charge of the tapes is 9.314, 7 times 10 to the negative 9th. The gravitational force of the tape is 1.95 in the positive y direction, and the electric field is 2.322 times 10 to the 5th in the positive y direction of the electric field. So the computational model for the line charge, um, we had to just iterate through the whole line. And so with that, we get this model where the blue is going to be, once again, the bottom tape, red's top. Um, the yellow arrow is electrical force. The, uh, the yellow is gravitational force. The white is electrical force. And the green is the electrical field. As you can see with the field, each individual um, like point along the line has a different uh, electrical field. And that's more realistic. That's more accurate because that's just how real electricity works not this not all evenly distributed and so uh that brings us to our reflection questions which say what uh if the signs of the protons and electrons were reversed i would say the electric field and the force would differ but the interaction would still remain the same because even though the charges flipped the two tapes would still repel each other because they had the same sign charge um why were the charges for the point and line charge models different and which one's more accurate uh the point charge model we assumed that all of the charge was concentrated at the center of the tape so therefore the q value was higher in the line charge the q value was way more accurate due to the fact that the charge is actually spread across the, the surface of the tape the surface area of the tape 
Um, so possible sources of error. Uh, when we did, we if we use a different kind of tape, there might have been a different outcome. And when handling the tape, grease slash oil from my fingers might have interfered with the charges that the tapes might have had. Uh, thank you.